There was a group of uh, researchers uh, led by a fellow named Elliot that have been publishing some information regarding um, atrial fib and exercise. So, so we're, this is the second video. I, I uh, uploaded one recently on um, atrial fib and exercise, part one. This is going to be part two. Um, <clears throat> brief introduction, Ford Brewer, uh, Dr. Brewer, the uh, physician and uh, medical director for PrevMed, heart attack, stroke, uh, cancer, uh, risk prevention. Um, <clears throat> why would I be talking about atrial fib and exercise? Well, um, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Why would I be talking about um, exercise after you've already got atrial fib? Again, this is going. This is part of the essence of this. These videos um, on atrial fib and exercise. Now, this is a uh, an article that was written by. Um, <clears throat> Again, a group led by a fellow named Elliot. It was in circulation January of 2016. Exercise training and atrial fibrillation. Uh, future, uh, uh, excuse me, further evidence for the importance of lifestyle changes. So as you begin to talk to, um, to cardiologists that are doing a lot of work in this area, they're getting back and again saying, even after you have atrial fib, lifestyle changes are critical. Now that article by Elliot was basically just an editorial review of, of the article I did in the other uh, video, the article by Malmo. Let's go over that article uh, real quick just for a review. Um, <clears throat> Malmo's study was a randomized clinical trial. Um, 50, they were from Sweden. They took 51 uh, atrial fib patients with significant atrial fib. They'd been referred for, um, for ablation. Uh, there were four cycles of four minutes at, um, well, there was a 10-minute warm-up at 60 to 70% max heart rate. Four cycles at four minutes of 85 to 95 percent in the intense level and three minutes of 60 to 70 percent recovery. The results decreased intensity, frequency, and duration of atrial fib among the patients that did the high intensity interval training. They also had weight loss, uh, improved lipid profiles, and some other really good things. Well now what about uh, Elliot's group. Well, first of all, they talk about some generalities with um, atrial fib, some things that many of us know, but many of us don't, so it's probably worth refer reviewing quickly. Most common arrhythmia, there's a global burden. Uh, it's increasing, uh, it increases with age. Um, it's a risk for stroke and myocardial infarction. There are several risk factors. Uh, many of them are modifiable. Obesity, um, blood pressure, high blood pressure, diabetes, obstructive sleep apnea. All of these things are treatable and modifiable. There's some are, are not. Age and gender, for example, are not really um, modifiable. Um, <clears throat> Actually, the gender is more of a risk factor for having stroke if you already have uh, atrial fib and some other risk factors for stroke. Now, what's the next level of information that uh, Elliot provided in his article? Um, exercise improves blood pressure, obesity, diabetes. So he's building a logic here around uh, exercise and atrial fib. Because these are all obviously risk factors for atrial fib and risk factors for stroke if you have atrial fib. He also makes the point, and a very important point, the cardiac structure and function is improved by exercise. And there's plenty of studies to show that. Now, here's, here's part of the conundrum. Moderate exercise has been clearly shown to decrease risk of developing atrial fib. But endurance athletes, the guys that are marathon runners, that kind of thing, and I've run a few marathons myself. I've uh, run an ultra marathon, although I didn't do very well, very slow. 
and had an injury, but those are different issues. Uh, endurance athletes have a significant increase in risk, two to seven times increase in risk. And in fact, that's probably related to my own personal uh, episode with atrial fib. I've actually suspected I have atrial fib. I've got 4Q25, which is a, a genetic risk factor. I've been an endurance athlete for three, well, more than three decades, I think. And I suspected it for over a year. I got a thing called iCardia, which is a way to monitor for atrial fib on the iPhone, and I actually did pick it up the other night. Um, that's a separate video, though. So back to Elliot and their article um, about exercise and atrial fib. So what you have here is a J-curve phenomenon with risk. Um, I can't read this one. Oh, the risk equation is like a J-curve. In other words, for moderate exercise, you get a decreased risk. But for significant exercise, you tend to get an increased risk for developing atrial fib. So, <clears throat> so how do we deal with that conundrum? That's what, what the issue is here. So he looked at the Malmo study, and again, the, his quotes, the Malmo uh, study findings are important and timely. They're consistent with uh, data from our group. So here's where, why and where they were uh, asked to do an editorial on the Malmo study. They had their own co cohort of over 300 atrial fib patients. They were overweight and obese patients, and they were symptomatic. Each one uh, increase in metabolic equivalent incremental gain in fitness resulted in a 9% decrease in atrial fib over the four-year period. So in other words, they did the same thing. They took people that had symptomatic atrial fib, started training them, and for every one metabolic equivalent on a treadmill, they were able to decrease um, atrial fib over the next four years by about 10%, 9%. Again, just a quick review on some other things. Why is this important? Atrial fib is a um, risk factor for stroke. It appears, but um, there's debate over this. It appears that when you get this chaotic um, loss of function in the atria, that you can get areas where clots are formed. Um, those clots then are perceived to go up to cause the stroke. There's some debate around that. Um, Bottom line is, it is associated, uh, atrial fib is associated with stroke. 15% of strokes are due to atrial fib. So we can talk later about risk factors associated with, uh, with that. For those of you who don't remember what atrial fib is, this is a cross section of the heart. These are the ventricles, the large muscular cha uh, chambers, and these are the atria. The chambers that basically their role is to um, create an electronic uh, impulse to guide the ventricles and to fill the ventricles. So they collect blood, push it into the ventricles, and then the ventricles are able to uh, squeeze and provide blood to the body and lungs. Now, <clears throat> atrial fib is where you get a circular fib fibrillation chaotic beat. So therefore you get a chaotic response with the ventricles. You'll typically see a rate of in the 150s. Um, my rates when I woke up at 2 o'clock the other morning with this, my rate was in the 150s. You'll see that on another video. Um, so we recommend several things in terms of treatment. We recommend blood thinners. I'll talk about that a little bit later in uh, other videos. Now, <clears throat> again, What's the exercise got to do with prevention? Well, this makes a, a point right here. Obviously, you get significant improvement in uh, weight loss with uh, interval training. You get uh, improvement in um, mitochondria uh, performance and function with interval training. Uh, decreased blood pressure, just uh, a whole lot of good things. And you don't have to be running on a treadmill to do interval training. I uh, see some of my other videos about interval training for um, 
older patients whose uh, exercise basically just consists of uh, walking.